Hey guys, uh, this is Hot Cheeseburger here. I promised you all a review video for Spider-Man 2, and today we're going to be breaking down on my own opinion and thoughts of the very game, so let's check it out. So, uh, first off, I want to go into the, the gameplay. It was phenomenal. It was actually worth playing. There's not a whole lot of um, games I like to play on the side, but like if there were this definitely would be one of them to me it feels like it, it just feels more fluent and more adaptive than the the last two the last two were amazing though I, i've been playing those on the side when i've been growing up with spider-man when i was like a kid and to me it felt like i was actually it was actually more fun this way and i i liked every every single thing of it and uh, that brings up to my next point, though. It makes players feel like both Spider-Man. Like, uh, there's, like, two different um, perspectives of both, like, two different uh, missions or side missions. And it feels like what no matter what mission you want to do, you want to try to play as both. But you can only choose one or the other. Now, I feel like if you were to play a mission... Um, as both Spider-Man, like maybe possibly later on in the future, then you would be able, then it would be able to feel like that. But otherwise, it was amazing, and I cannot wait to see what goes on from here. <clears throat> and then, fighting feels more creative than the creative, and I think the only way I. Uh, I say this is because uh, in the last two games you had all kinds of even from the very beginning from the first one you actually do feel more creative because no you have an unlimited amount of number of gadgets that you could use and and also in the Miles Morales a uh, little side story game uh, you also have like more abilities and more powers that you can use and they brought some back from the previous games and brought it into this one. And whenever, whenever you do, you you feel more like Spider Man every single day, and I think I think that to me that's like the most basic thing that anyone could do, and it actually feels really really amazing. And the only thing that I didn't like is that they there was only. A limited amount of number of gadgets that because we have the web grabber we have that upshot we have the ricochet web and we have that gravity gravity push thing and it was only four gadgets and I'm like there was a whole lot of gadgets in the first one so I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't bring back the the trip mine uh, web because that was my personally favorite gadget to use I, I could use it no matter what <laughs> But um, otherwise, it was it was still pretty amazing and it was still pretty fun. And then number two, I'm going into number two now. Number two is the story. And it's uh, to me, it's another classic Spider-Man story. Uh, a good guy triumphs over evil, but something else he was not able to conquer. Something new. And to me. I think I think that took that takes inspiration from other Spider-Man comics, like including the one one with the black suit storyline. They uh, Insomniac did their research on that, and they basically they basically had uh, the whole team figure out what was happening, where it's supposed to go. And what character has to be part of the story? And to me, I think they did a really good job and take on the Black Suit storyline because uh, we haven't seen that kind of storyline in a while, and we haven't seen like um, where sometimes the the symbiote takes over not just not just your entire body, but also your soul too, and it makes you more aggressive and it makes you more more um, powerful against your enemies if if that makes any sense <laughs> and then um, that actually 
got over my um, next point of this inspiration from the comics. Like I said, they took inspiration from the classic Spider-Man storyline. They um, they uh, basically did the research, and they they might have seen like other um, media on how to like portray the symbiote storyline. And to me, that's just like that's pretty amazing. And the and the next part is the amount of time and effort they put in this. They they did it for a while. It it was first announced in twenty twenty one, a year after Miles Morales came out. And I think the the only reason they haven't shown anything back then since it's because they were trying to work very hard and feel more uh, hopeful that they were getting the job done and they they did i i have they did i all oh, that's all i got to say is that they did um the only thing that um was a little bit of a trouble is that everyone i think it was more of um I don't, I don't really know how to say this. It was more of like the 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 little um, lags issue issue, but like uh, that's what most everyone problem was. I feel like it was the lags issue, but like I I barely even noticed any lags when I was playing, and and if I did, I just laughed it off. I was like, hey, that guy's in the sand, but he's in the sand. Well, let's try to get him out, and let's just um let's just take him out. <laughs> Alright, <clears throat> and then the next thing I want to go over is the characters of the story. Uh, the first ones are Peter and Miles. Now, uh, when this first game, when this game was first announced, uh, we saw the teaser trailer, and then a while back, a few months ago, we saw the the gameplay trailer, and we got to see how we could switch from either Peter or Miles Morales to. Uh, to play any single player mission that there was available in that. And to me, I thought that was like a really cool thing and really cool feature that they did. And all, and story perspective wise, I felt Miles was a little bit shorter, but I feel like it was more important too, because that was on his way to uh, figure out how he could become a really good Spider-Man, like his mentor. Now, uh, there's no surprise that there's that he looks up to Peter like all the time. So whenever he saw Peter like acting more aggressive and more and more like angry and like any other emotional that afraid that was in his mind when he was in the black suit, there was no surprise that he was like, "What is going on with him? I mean, I gotta help him." Um, that's like the whole point of the symbiote suit is it not only makes you stronger, but it also makes you more aggressive and it causes like distances. Now I won't, I don't want to say strained relationships because it causes like, it caused Peter to go like distance himself from like everybody because he believed that he could do all of this by himself now. And, um, I also think that was a really good perspective on his part. The other thing, the other thing I want to go over is Peter's not normally like the the aggressive kind of guy. So whenever he had the black suit on, it it felt it to me it felt like a little bit different. And I've seen I've seen like other portrayals of him wearing the black suit, and I'm like I understood the storyline. And I was really excited to play it with the with the black suit because like for a while we haven't even been able to see what that kind of portrayal in any other superhero game that I've ever seen. Now, um, in the Batman games, Batman is known as like being aggressive, and he is known as like uh, taking out all his enemies, but he doesn't kill them. He he holds himself back because. He believes that if he even killed, like, the Joker, say someone like the Joker or, like, any other villain, if he just killed one person, there's no way that he would come back from that after. And I think 
uh, because that's how he is portrayed, that makes a lot more sense because he doesn't want to like do anything like that. But I'm getting off topic here, but I just thought I'd share that real quick. Uh, for uh, Peter, that's that's he's portrayed as like a, a nice guy, like a, a very funny guy who, who makes ri ridiculous and ridiculous puns and jokes. And he tries to like uh, have the humor be part of this whole superhero gig because that's the only way that he could like fight the tension that's happening right now. And to see him going all like aggressive like Batman or even something, it, it makes him it makes him like that terrifying if you think about it. And um I think the other thing, even if he didn't have the black suit, if he did decide to like go all crazy and just like kill every single supervillain that there ever was, I had a feeling that he would be a lot more terrifying. <laughs> Uh, but uh, Miles, I, I I appreciate what they were trying to do. Like former uh, student and now like full time superhero by, by himself. We saw that in uh, Miles M Morales, but now I think since I've heard rumors that he's gonna be the new main Spider Man from now on, I have a feeling there's a whole lot more to his story than we could ever hope to um to see but I'm pretty interested on where they go forward from there and then the next one I want to go over is the side characters I'm talking about like uh, Mary Jane Watson, Genki, uh, Miss Morales, Miss Rio Morales, um, Harry Os. well actually Harry Osborne is not a side character so I'm gonna leave him out uh, and Haley Cooper uh, you know the little girl with the the big old curly hair I thought she was amazing uh, and I um I think I mentioned it in like one of my uh, gameplay videos where you get to play as her it actually um Insomniac did a really good job at that because it's like whenever you got, you got to play as her in like one of the side missions you uh you you couldn't hear anything around you like because she is deaf so she could only uh read lips and uh only use sign language because she also can't talk but and i also thought that was really cool because we got to see like a perspective i'm not of like how a, a deaf person is portrayed but like um it's very it's very uh it's very important to uh, be aware of those things in, in today's world because there's a whole lot of Others who who can't even hear or who can't uh, speak, but who also can't see, and we have to be aware, and we have to be supportive to those around us because it's also because we're also not perfect. We also have our flaws, and I, I feeling that this just helps uh understand. I have feeling this mission helped us understand their perspective a little bit more, and I'm I have. Gen genuine love and respect for all the all the others out there who are dealing with this sort of issue and um the next one is i, I talked about Haley cooper it is mary jane watson she was an important side character because uh, she's a uh, peter's love interest uh, same with Haley cooper she's a uh, miles morales's love interest now and uh MJ is portrayed now as a, a journalist uh, who works for the Daily Bugle. And she so desperately wants to keep her job at all costs. And then when I saw the, the newspaper article for uh, how she was talking about Peter like going on crazy with the villains and stuff, I felt like that almost caused a, a strain in the relationship. But she, in the last game, she was like pretty stubborn. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. She was pretty stubborn and believed that uh, she was doing the right thing, and she thought that Peter was just being too overprotective and too controlling. But I understand his perspective that uh, she doesn't have any powers, so she can't like put herself into like immediate danger like that. But then, if you think about it, Batman doesn't have any powers, but he's been training a long time. MJ has MJ is just like a journalist, 
So I understand that perspective. But, <laughs> but um, I feel like MJ just wanted to prove herself and instead of like being as a damsel in distress, as more of like a team player. And as more of like somebody who doesn't want to back down from the truth. Because the truth is sacred. And no matter what, no matter what obstacle is in your way, you have to find a way to fight past it. Now, MJ, MJ and Peter both got back together in the first one. And in this one, their relationship is further developed because now they are moved in together and they are... Still loving towards each other, no, despite what happened with the whole black suit thing with with Peter and all that. It felt it felt like she didn't give up on Peter because Peter didn't give up on MJ. No matter what issue was in the way. Now, um, Genki is the best friend to um, Miles Morales. He's also in the other comics. If you didn't um, know that, Genki, I have a feeling that. He didn't have, like, a whole lot of time in this game. He was, like, more, like, uh, involved with, like, the comms and and the, the train and then the drone. But I also feel like that he was more important to Miles' storyline because he, uh, the whole issue was that Miles was planning a, a revenge scheme, I guess, and Genki and both Haley were trying to help him out. They were, like, Hey, dude, you can't do that. I mean, it, we're just worried about you. We're, we're your friends. And it's not until later on that that becomes, like, a thing. And I like how um, they did that, too. Now, uh, Miles' mother, Rio Morales, she is actually... Uh, plays an important part to Miles because um, she now knows his secret. She now is the councilwoman of Harlem and basically like a I think a one of the district leaders or something. I I'm, I'm not entirely sure how you say it. I'm thinking about Hunger Games when I say district leaders. <laughs> um but no she plays an important part to Miles' storyline because uh, she's the mother and she also is trying to be supportive of her son. And also She's basically uh, going on on other relationships with uh, a certain someone's father, who I'm gonna go into next, and like, but still, I feel like um, in this uh, last side mission that we did with her, uh, where we had to like locate all these musical instruments or something, I felt like she played an important role in that because um, she loves music. She believed that it would help her community. And when she asks for uh, Miles' help, it basically it, it basically covers everything. And now I am. Uh, it was shown last minute, but we basically got to see in the in the second post credit scene. We basically got to see Cindy Moon. Now many of you do not know her, but um, according to the comics and according to um, everyone, she is known as Silk. And she's basically another uh, person with spider powers, and I have to look her up a little bit more, but uh, apparently in the comics, like in some other version, her and Peter actually were in a relationship. Now, she is a teenager in this, so it's probably and possibly later, later on in future games where they're going to show her as a spider person now. And then they're going to bring out the very, very best abilities for her and for everyone else related to her. And I feel like her storyline is not yet done. Now, let's see. Uh, the villains. I want to talk to you about the villains now. Uh, first one, uh, Venom. I feel like they portrayed him uh, the very same way as in the comics. And I've uh, we haven't seen the villains... Portrayal of him for a while. We we saw like a, the movies like Venom, where he's like an anti-hero who just like eats people's heads off. And we haven't seen that kind of um, a villain for a while now. Now, <laughs> how they portrayed him 
as a big and terrifying symbiote monster, that's Venom. That's Venom. I don't have any problems with like the anti-hero and all that, but he's mostly known as a villain who's trying to kill Spider-Man. And I think Insomniac did a really good job with that. Also with Craven the Hunter, who this is my next point of a uh, topic right now. Craven the Hunter is mostly um, a villain who's trying to look for the right target to kill and basically accomplish his mission. So whenever he meets Spider-Man, he believes that he has met his match. And then they, they go like on sparring matches to, to determine who is better. But Spider-Man, he ain't about competition. He's just trying to bring this guy down. Craven doesn't care what's in his way or who is in his way. He will do anything to accomplish his goal. And now uh, there's like been a few villains who have died, like Scorpion. I felt like I felt like it was a pretty cool scene to watch, but I felt like a little bit confused because I wanted to see more of Scorpion. Maybe I'm maybe somehow like in later games or if they decide to do like a prequel they could show scorpion and all that but i feel like his storyline now is like pretty much done since he's dead now uh martin lee he's a uh, he used to be a former villain in like spider-man one he's portrayed as as the guy in charge of feast a, a homeless shelter for all those who don't have anywhere else to go he basically wants to help people that is who uh, May Parker, Peter Peter Parker's aunt. That was her old boss. And then later on in the first one, he's uh, later portrayed as Mister Negative, um, basically a villain who uh, has two sides of himself, one of them good, one of them bad, and, and it's like black and white, so it's kind of like the yin yang uh, symbol that you see in like um, other other. Um, forms of media or even in China or Japan I believe but that basically portrays as both him as a good guy in real life but also as a bad guy and uh, they he's basically out for revenge uh, for Norman Osborn who uh, basically killed his parents and like an experiment that they were trying to do with him and then uh, there was that whole revenge spree and then he broke out of jail, or Craven broke him out of jail, him and Scorpion, and then all of a sudden he was captured by Craven, and then him and Miles uh, fight in uh, a match in one of the gameplays that I did a while back. Uh, Miles is pretty much trying to take revenge for what happened with his father and Martin Lee, because Martin Lee killed his father in the bombing accident in the first one. But Lee doesn't know that. He just knows that his name was Miles, but when Miles suddenly decides to let him in, he's like, what? I killed your father? And then um, later on, instead of like a f finishing the match, Miles just decides to send him out to uh, escape and look for the other Spider-Man, who is... Peter and who is actually being infected by the symbiote at the time. Now, I like how they uh, reformed him into the good guy he is now. I'm not entirely sure where his story continues after this, but uh, we know that he goes back to jail and he's trying to right the wrongs of his life. And we now know that he no longer seeks revenge from Norman Osborn, I, I think. We'll have to, we'll have to go... Uh, later on into that detail, I, I believe, it'll f in the future. Now, the next one, uh, Norman Osborn. Norman Osborn is, like, one of the big bads, eh, the big bads in Spider-Man comics. He is known also as the Green Goblin. He uh, basically tries to uh, 
kills Spider-Man. And he's basically uh, Spider-Man's greatest arch nemesis in all of comic book history related to Spider-Man. And then um, in this one, he's portrayed as the mayor of New York City. Now, I have no idea how he became mayor of New York. Maybe he was just like, everyone loved him because he was rich and powerful and he had his own company. So maybe that was how he got into mayor. And then I think after what happened with his son, Harry, in this one, because he was trying to find every single cure um, with... With Harry because his son was dying. He, it was a form of cancer that his wife also had. And he didn't want to lose his son too. So he that's when he found the symbiote. A while, while back. And he decided to like. Just try to use that to save his own kid. Now. If it was my kid. There's no doubts that I would try to do anything to also bring him. And keep him alive. But there has to be. There has to be another way besides using, like, a big alien goo that could also t tear you from limb to limb on the inside out. Yes, it, it heals you of your own wounds, but it also makes you more crazy. Now, uh, in this game, I believe that he, Norman, believes that the Spider-Man were responsible for what happened to Harry. And now he's trying to, like, find ways to get back at them for something that was even... Entirely their fault. Um, so even if that means like reuniting with one of his old friends, Otto Octavius, who is also known as Dr. Octopus or Dog Doc for short. Now, there's no surprise. I have a feeling that he's going to be the next big bad in Spider-Man 3 later on. Because we saw the post credit scene and we also, we also saw him... Uh, make a phone call talking about uh, is the G serum ready? Use it on Harry. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and then um, also next point of issue that I have is he's both uh, new and maybe reformed because it's been a while since he showed up uh, or either of them showed up. Uh, Lizard and Sandman. Now the Lizard, he is a also known as Dr. Curtis Connors, who uh, lost his uh, one of his arms a while back in either an army. But in this game, he lost his arm because of the symbiote when he was trying to grab it and trying to contain it because of what happened with Harry. Now, I, I like how they had used that instead of the army thing. But I also like both versions in, in either some aspect because no matter what happens... Connors is trying to get his arm back. He uses this little uh, uh, antidote or something to uh, recreate his arm. And once once the experiment works, his arm grows all the way back. And he thought he was free. But then all of a sudden, later on when he comes home, his wife and son look at him differently and they start to get terrified. He has no idea what's going on. Connors has... Absolutely no idea. So when he looks at his hands, he sees that it's all like um, all big and there's like long nails coming out of him, long nails. And then that's when he starts to like, wait, what? What is happening? And then that's when he decides to, and that's when he turns into the lizard. Now, it's been a while since the lizard showed up. So whenever Cra Craven finds him and injects him with the same toxin that makes him into the lizard... That's pretty bad news. And then um, there's the whole New York City chase thing where Peter is trying to hunt him down. And there's the big old boss battle. I like how they portrayed him as not just a, a scientist who's gone crazy. But if he were to decide to fully become the lizard, which he almost did, like if it weren't for the loser mind mind thing that was happening right now if he ever did decide to like bec become full on lizard it would be pretty bad like he would basically try to kill spider-man no matter what now sandman is another uh, former villain of uh, flint marco 
he is called in this one. And uh, he he basically broke out of jail a while back, and he's uh, trying to like uh, be free from Craven and from like everyone else. So when he decides to start attacking the city for no reason, I felt like that was an in introduction to one of the very first boss battles that we've seen in, in a while since we last saw the Kingpin. And I'm like, wow, that was pretty cool. Like when I, me and Carrie first jumped into that, we were like, wait, we got we came to fight the Sandman. <laughs> so cool. And it it was like a little bit of repetitive at first, but like I like how they portrayed all the villains from every single comic book storyline. And to me, that was just like that was basically reliving. Uh, other people's childhoods too because I know other people have grown up with these villains grown up with the heroes and the characters and everything and it was just basically it was basically like I was really happy to relive that moment for you all and I know like in the later side missions where you have to like collect these crystals to figure out what why he did what he did it gives you a better perspective on his side because he's also they're also human like us. They also lo lost a loved ones, but they have a different effect on how on how they use their powers because not everyone is like Peter or Miles or every other superhero. They basically uh, believe that the world took their precious precious like um important thing to them and because of that they decided to uh, get back at them because they believed that the villains believed that the people were responsible and uh yes i'm not saying that i agree with their methods but it's understandable on why they they uh, want to try to get back at them because I have no idea what I would have done if I was in their situation. <laughs> and um, I think my last thing overall, overall, this is the, the last topic I'm going to bring up. Overall, I I believe this was a really good uh, superhero game that we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, like a sequel superhero game. like, And I feel... That they did their research with every single villain, every single um, mechanic, and they they basically wanted us to feel more like Spider Man. And to me, that's like the best thing I could have ever asked for in this year of twenty twenty three. Now, will there be other games? Yes, uh, there's going to be coming out with the Wolverine game. And I have no idea what's going to happen out of that, but I'm pretty excited what they do. Maybe, hopefully, they'll do some DLC. And then, if there is DLC, I will definitely play it with you all. And we shall see what happens next. But anyways, I appreciate all you all watching this kind of review video of my perspective of the game. I haven't done these kinds of reviews for a while, but you can expect more from me later on in the future. And anyways, uh, don't forget to subscribe and drop a like on the video if you enjoyed. And I'll see you all next time.